thanks a lot, Liz and Zach and Alex. Um, I think our speakers so far have been excellent, and the rest I'm sure will be too. Each of these topics could have an entire um, hour-long presentation of their own, um, but we've tried to provide a kind of a survey of information. Um, I want to speak a little bit about the um, the history of the bus pass at, at BYU. Um, it's been an important issue this year. Uh, it's got a lot of attention. And I just want to provide a little bit of a history of what has happened with that and, and where that's come from. Um, eight years ago was the first time that BYU had such a pass. And this was created because the federal government offered a grant that the university could use to provide um, public transportation options for their students. And so this grant money was used to make a contract with UTA, Utah Transit Authority, um, where BYU could issue these bus passes for students, faculty, and staff. And the way it worked is BYU makes a contract with UTA for one year. Um, for a set amount of money, BYU can issue as many bus passes as they would like to. Um, so um, BYU uh, agreed to use this uh, federal money and created this program. Um, and this was free to students the first year. Um, uh, Uncle Sam put the bill for us to be able to ride the bus. Um, and. 20% um, of students signed up for a bus pass card. Um, I don't know the exact numbers of how many students actually rode the bus, um, but it was a pretty effective program. Um, now, when BYU uh, created this program, they, the administration promised the Board of Trustees that it would be self-funded, meaning the university would not spend any uh, university budget or tuition funds on the program. Um, so after this one year um, gift from the government, um, they had to find a solution to provide the, continue providing the bus passes. Um, the original solution was that um, the bus pass contract was paid by charging parking for all the um, students who parked on campus. Um, and the way that worked is you had to pay for a, a parking uh, permit to park on campus, and that money went towards um, paying for the bus pass, which still remained free to any student who, want, uh, who would like to sign up for it. Um, this created a few problems. Um, first of all, the parking students were concerned that they were paying for another student's transportation. Um, also, the um, the neighbors of the university were complaining um, for some of the reasons that Wills mentioned, that students, instead of buying a parking permit, they would just park in the tree streets or in the neighborhood streets around the university. So the, the neighbors were complaining to the university. Um, and so they decided, the university decided, to no longer charge money for parking, but to make it a free service to students. Um, the parking was still funded by the university budget, um, but it was a free service to all the students that would like it. Um, now, that brings up the question again, how do we fund the bus pass? Um, how do we pay this annual contract that BYU was renewing every year with UTA? Um, and so they did, the, in 2005, the switch was made where the bus pass cost a student money. It cost $120 per student. And this price, um, based on the assumed number of students that would use the bus pass, would total up to enough money to pay back UTA for the contract. Um, and this worked very well for some time. In fact, in the first few years after this change, um, BYU was bringing in more money from bus pass sales than the cost of the contract. So it was very successful. Um, unfortunately, um, bus ridership, or at least bus pass purchases, have declined steadily over the last um, five years, at least since 2005. Um, 
And obviously there was a big drop when it changed from being free to costing $120 before that. Um, so the number of bus pass purchases has gone down. Also the contract price that BYU and UTA agreed upon was increasing every year. Um, and part of this is likely because of the increased cost in gas and um, other reasons that UTA was charging a higher um, price for this contract. And so the rising price and the declining income um, met last year. The um, 2009-2010 school year did not, um, the bus pass sales were not enough to pay back the contract amount, and so BYU um, lost money on that that year. And fortunately, they had saved up from the previous years where they were earning money, and so it was fine. Um, but also that year, um, when BYU administration went to um, negotiate the contract for this year, the 2010-2011 school year, um, the price offered by UTA was significantly higher um, than it had been the previous year, and it grew more than it had between the previous years. Um, and I'm sorry I don't have exact figures to give you. BYU doesn't share their budget information, um, so I can't tell you exactly, although percentages are available on the, uh, um, some press releases BYU has given out. Um, but the price, the price that UTA offered BYU for this year's contract was very high, and BYU decided, the administration decided that they could not afford it based on the bus pass sales from last year, which was lower than before. Um, so it was, uh, throughout the summer, um, BYU administration continued to meet with the UTA um, regional manager to negotiate, and it was a long process going back and forth. Eventually, BYU was able to negotiate a contract price that was much lower than the original offer, um, but still um, a significant increase from last year. Um, BYU then um, agreed upon that, and that happened, that contract was signed three days before school began. So it was very close. It came very close to there no, being no bus pass at all for this year. Um, but the administration worked very hard um, putting a lot of extra hours working with UTA, trying to come to an agreement that BYU could afford, um, and they did. Um, but UTA and BYU both agreed that that price was not a long-term uh, sustainable price. And so they announced, both of them decided together, that the bus pass would end, this ed pass program would end um, after this school year. Now, um, that leaves us now with this last year of using the bus, and we want to encourage all of you to use the bus, ride the bus, um, buy a bus pass if you haven't already. Um, I ride the bus um, not every day when the weather's really great like today, but in a week or two I'm going to be riding every day um, to school and work. And I love it, and I hope that you can experience that. We provide some websites on the back of your program of how to plan routes, how you can easily, on this Google Transit, the last one, you can type your starting address, your finishing address. You can, um, it'll plot a route, what time you catch the bus, where you connect to other buses, all of that. Um, and, uh, once you use it once or twice, you can uh, see how easy it is and how great it is. Um, so now for the future, where does that leave us? Um, the administration, BYU administration, has been very clear that the EdPass program is over um, and that the program will not be restarted again the way it is now. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that there will never be a public transportation or arrangement for students. Um, the administration is, continue, is continuing to be open to um, work with UTA to find some other solution. Um, most universities in Utah that work with UTA use the EdPass system that we have this year. Um, there are some others that are experimenting with other programs. 
BYU may in the future do that. Um, the, when the, this program, which is ended, was created, there was this promise that university funds would not be used. Um, that's not necessarily a forever commitment for all programs, so that is a, possible, a possibility in the future, um, although it's not been necessarily brought up or announced. So I hope that you have learned some of the background, and uh, there are many student groups and faculty groups who are hoping to work with the administration to find a, a solution that would provide affordable um, bus passes or other public transportation means for students, faculty, and staff. Um, for the year after this year, there's a monthly bus pass available for students, um, which is $57 a month. Um, and hopefully that will help all of you to ride the bus. Thank you. Um, we're going to turn the time over to Alexander Lovett, who's the president of the BYU chapter of the Institute of Transportation Engineers. After him, we'll hear from uh, Dr. Mitsuru Saito, who is a professor of transportation engineering in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. Then we'll hear from Dr. George Hanley, um, also a professor at BYU. And finally, we'll hear from our main speaker, um, Jared Doxey, who, um, and I'll introduce him at that point. <laughs> 